Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I've got a really different build for you guys. Uh, this is going to be my first melee character in a little while. Uh, and it's kind of interesting and it's going to sound a little special at first. So let me go ahead and tell you guys what it is. We are playing a one-handed perma-stun gladiator. Uh, the reason why I decided against two-handers is I don't really like two-handed mobility options. I don't really like using leap slam. And I don't really like defenses for two-handed builds, unless you're playing things like Cyclone or something else. Um, or if you're ranged, kind of, and whatnot. But anyway, I wanted to kind of try out how one-handers would feel, because I haven't really played a one-handed build in... I don't even know, I can't even remember. Um, so this is the tree that we've got, and this character will be near max block. So I'm 44 block, 44 spell block, and with Pain Forged, we'll have 52% block, uh, and 52% spell block, and then by picking up Testudo, uh, coming up this way, we should be 60% block and 60% spell block. So that's pretty good. We get about 200% life from our tree. Really good amounts of leech with whatever this node is, plus blood rage, plus mace nodes. Um, so for the uniques in this build, we are using the claw mace, which is going to be our weapon for quite a while. Uh, because it gives reduced enemy stun threshold and cannot knock enemies back. I really don't like knockback in this game, so I actually really do like this weapon. Uh, for my boots, I'm using Red Blade Tramplers because they give 10% reduced enemy stun threshold. Uh, for my belt, we've got reduced enemy stun threshold with stun duration on the implicit. I'm using an Abyssus because it's pretty easy to counteract all of the physical mitigation. Uh, so for example, Outmatch and Outlast gives us 10% reduced physical damage taken while at maximum endurance charges. Um, we can also use, um, or sorry, that's that's 10% mitigation there. We have three endurance charges, which is 12. Soul of Steel is 4% mitigation. And then, as of right now, we can get much more armor, but we're sitting at 10k, uh, which should easily counteract Abyssus with all of our, uh, our multipliers. And I haven't died yet on the character, except for like one AFK deaths, but that doesn't really count, right? So like, overall, I haven't really taken high physical hits, and my defense scaling will get higher and higher. My HP is pretty low right now. Um, I have a ton of life notes to pick up. I've got life here. I've got life here. I've got life on jewels. I've got life pretty much all through here. I can choose to go to like the life up here or the scion life wheel as this character is only level 73 and will have more points in the full 3.0. Now, I originally was testing it out with ground slam and not sunder, but it just seems that sunder is just so damn strong, which kind of makes me upset. I can clear maps and everything just fine, um, with Ground Slam, but Sunder is just so much quicker. So I want to show you guys two different variants, all right? So I'm going to do Sunder with less AoE, and then I'm going to do a regular Dunes um, with Ground Slam. So our links are Melee Fizz, Multi-Strike, Brutality, Ruthless, and Sunder. Now one thing to note is if I was using Mame as a 6-link, uh, my clear speed and damage would go up like immensely just because of how much more damage I would get off of it. I just put in multi-strike recently, it's only level 10 because it adds just so much fluidity to the build. And for bosses, we pretty much just swap in maim and just smack them. So one big benefit of ground slam is ground slam does give us uh, permanent endurance charges with rapid expansion, but it has significantly less base damage compared to sunder. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys really fast and then we're gonna just jump right on into the maps. So my 17 ground slam is 115%. And my 16 Sunder is 173%, uh, which is just pretty dumb. <clears throat> this does have reduced enemy stun threshold um, and increased stun duration, whereas Sunder just has raw damage. And the last thing is I don't use a stun support gem, but if I wanted to stun like higher end bosses, I would probably need to use it. As of right now, I can pretty much stun everything. I haven't actually tried this Dunes boss yet, so let's see what happens. Do I have Enduring Cry? Here we go. I do have Enduring Cry. Now this is also a reduced AoE map, and no way in hell would I play Ground Slam in here because I'd want to just kill myself, so <laughs> let's not do that. Um, one other cool thing to note is like, having a Lion's Roar would be like a huge damage increase to this build. Um, which would be pretty nice, but, you know, we don't have one, so rip. But I don't want to have to rely on a Lion's Roar to stun bosses, unless it's, like, super endgame bosses or something. Wasn't there, like, a Breach? I thought I saw a Breach here or something. I 
As for damage scaling with the character, I don't expect this to be able to perma stun like, I don't know, Minotaur and stuff like that and crazy endgame bosses. I potentially could. I've never really played a stun build, so I don't know exactly how high the scaling is. But as of right now, even with all the, the boss health increase, I've still stun locked pretty much every single boss that I've come across at my level. Uh, and of course, I like I said, I still do have quite a bit of damage supports to pick up um, with the 6 link and just a couple more jewels and etc. I think I may even be able to craft like a better weapon endgame too, but we'll worry about that later. So you can tell what's stunned based off of the little stun thing on their face. Is the boss up here? So for the boss, let's just pull out... Where is my MAME? MAME for multi-strike. And I'm just going to get my frenzy charges up. Oh, did this one not work for him? There we go. Oh, just lost my frenzy charges, rip. So that was my bad. This is a, a pretty bad example. Because uh, normally I would have everything like permanently stun locked, but... Uh, that guy was unstun locked, so it feels bad. Um, I'm sure Ground Slam will take care of him, no problem, but Ground Slam's probably going to kill him quite a bit slower. Oh yeah, let me put on multi-strike again. Hold on. Where is my multi-strike at? I'm still not really used to the Sunder playstyle either, so excuse my uh, my noobness. I'm not used to playing these these melee skills yet. Oh, here's the breach. Okay. Okay, so that's pretty much this map. Let me go ahead and put in a pretty much identical map here. This is going to be double boss, but no boss life. And we're just going to swap in Ground Slam instead of Sunder. So the one benefit of Ground Slam, like I was saying, is I do have a Rabbit Expansion Jewel in here, which you can see what it offers. Uh, it's going to give us essentially permanent endurance charges throughout the whole area, which is why I like it, even though it is a much slower playstyle, like significantly slower, as you can see. It just feels, I don't know. So sometimes it's okay to go a little bit away from the clear speed meta, right? <laughs> I think if I had a 6 link, uh, Ground Slam would just feel so much better too. Just because Ground Slam really needs the damage supports. Feels stun locked, man. I 
Okay, these are the bosses. Maim for multi strike. All right. Does he get increased life in that phase? Oh, I lost my frenzy charges, that's why. Okay, that was my bad. Alright, buddy. Let's chill out here for a second. Alright, we should be good now. There we go. So, for the most part, like I said, it's doing pretty well. Um, I expect to stun lock pretty much everything up until red maps. At red maps, I think it's going to be significantly more difficult. Uh, definitely getting a six link would drastically help with that. I'm not really too sure though. I actually really like this character though. Like, I think it's suited very well for hardcore, having like pretty decent layers of defense. Um, I'm a little skeptical to see, I don't know, to see how far the damage goes with a one-hander. But I really do feel that like if you were to invest into this character, like I said, like six link, uh, I think steel rings, proper flat fizz crafts. I think you could be pretty good. Like you'd be pretty solid to go. Um, and I think that with Ground Slam, I mean, honestly, if they just, like, increase the AoE of Ground Slam by, like, 15%, if they just increase it by, like, 15% and maybe buff the damage by, I don't know, like, 25-30%, or just make it in line with other skills, I think that that would be, like, that would be super good for it, because the problem with Ground Slam right now is unless you're doing a stunlock build, and even when you're doing a stunlock build, there's really just not much of a reason to use Ground Slam over anything else. Um, with the exception of just the free Endurance Charge generation. But you could always just hit, like, Enduring Cry, right? So... Hopefully, GGG will see this video and maybe realize that, you know, Ground Slam needs some love. I mean, I'm sure everybody has known that for, like, quite a while, though. It is worth noting that I'm not using a unique chest at all. So, there's like a ton of different defense options you could use, like Belly of the Beast, Duresso's Defiance, Lightning Coil. Although, Coil with Abyssus would be kind of weird, but I mean, I have 10k armor right now, so it's not really too much of an issue. Okay, so lastly, I kind of want to just glance over the skill tree and kind of explain to you guys why. So, like, the reason why I decided to go Gladiator over Slayer is I don't think Slayer is very good for one handed, and I. The only two-handed weapon I really saw for stun locking off the top of my head, I posted on the screen there. I don't know what it's called. Tidebreaker, I think, which is pretty good. But Gladiator just gives so much mobility, which I really like. Like, Outmatch and Outlast is so good. Um, all of these baby nodes here give attack speed, which I think is really important because you don't always get that much attack speed in a stun build. Getting uh, whatever the fuck this is violence, I think, will drastically increase, like, my clear speed which is going to be very important for Ground Slam, so I really like that. At first I was like, well, I just hit once and it's kind of hard, so like I don't really see the point in getting this, but after putting in multi-strike into my build, I really feel that this is going to be super helpful. Um, yeah, so moving on into it, I was thinking about dual wield, but I decided to scrap it and just go shields instead. So you pretty much, uh, for stun, if people are curious on how it works, you would essentially... Let's see, how do I how do I go with this? Okay, so like the core nodes for stunning targets would definitely be like stun mastery here, because you want to grab stun duration and reduced enemy stun threshold. Those are kind of like the two most important things. If you look at two handers, there's really only one node here, which is executioner, which is hit steal, what is it? 20% increased stun duration with two-handed melee weapons on enemies. That's it, it's just one node. So it's not like you get that much of an advantage. Obviously, you have much higher base damage. But in terms of skill points, it's just one node. Actually, two if you come over here. I think Martial Expertise uh, has stun duration as well. Other than that, there's just the Slayer nodes for stun, and that's pretty much it. So you can actually be pretty flexible with how you want to make your stun characters. And if you're curious, you can look at my weapon DPS. It's not like my weapon is ridiculously strong either. So you can actually stun with quite a few different options, which is really cool. Uh, I do believe that stun hits, and I you, I can't like confirm this at all. This is what people told me, but I believe stun hits diminishing returns at about a hundred or sorry seventy five percent stun threshold. I believe it hits diminishing returns, and after seventy five percent, now this isn't actually one twenty one. This is before diminishing returns. It's like basically gets harder to allocate. And that's pretty much what diminishing returns is. Um, so you guys can look that up if you're curious to see. 
Um, just to show you guys without ground slam, you can see my, where is it? There you go. My stun threshold slash duration as well, if you guys are curious. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, hope that maybe this might open your eyes to some stun builds, because it's pretty fun. I mean, I don't mind it. You know, it's pretty It's pretty cool. People are complaining about the, uh, the boss meta right now. How about you just stun lock everything? It's okay. They don't move then. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.